Hello again, Lockpicking Paul here, and this is my entry into uh, Lockpicking Hippie's 250 giveaway. So congratulations, Lockpicking Hippie. Um, you're relatively new to me, um, but you've got some cool stuff. Um, I'll be interested to see more of what you do. And this is a great giveaway. I love the, uh, love the idea of talking about your comfort locks. So, you know, firstly, you know, congratulations, really well done. And uh, I look forward to seeing more of your stuff. The purpose of this is to talk about the comfort locks. Um, and it was a, it's a really good point, right? If you're working on a new lock and you're le trying to level up, um, and it could be weeks, in some cases months, before you get that lock sussed out and open, um, and you do occasionally need to go back and remind yourself you can actually pick a lock open. Uh, I, right now, I'm working... I'm working on several red and black belt locks simultaneously, and I'm making very limited progress with all of them. I probably should just focus on one lock, but I have the attention span of a gnat, so I just have to jump around. It can take me a while, but then I'll get a flurry of opens. So, but right now, phew, not so much. <laughs> and so I, it's good to go back and get some lock open and, and uh, build the old confidence levels back up. Now, I don't have one. Uh, comfort lock I've got several these are my three favorites and they're all different it's a disc detainer there's a lever lock and a pin tumbler um, and the, the thing with lock picking is that it is a perishable skill if you don't pick a certain type of lock fairly frequently you're going to sort of lose that muscle memory it takes it doesn't take that long to get it back but it certainly you can pick up a dimples of my bet noir if I pick up a dimple lock it can take me a little while to get back into them uh, and get them open because I don't pick them that often um, and I probably should sort of work a dimple lock into my rotation of, of comfort locks but that's what it is I, these locks will literally be on the side of my desk I'll reach for them if I've got 10 minutes and just open them all up just to uh, feel good about myself so that's what the point of this video is I'm gonna hopefully go through all three of these relatively quickly now for the benefit of Nigby They've all got the keys. There you go, mate. I keep my keys with the locks. <laughs> uh, if you've seen Nigby's video where he shows his shelf, he keeps all his keys in a massive box. I just think, oh, this sort of messes with my, uh, a little bit of my OCD. So I just, the keys have got to be with the locks. Anyway, a little bit of side, side view there. Right, let's get these open. There's going to be lots of key jangling here as well. I don't know if that's a, a, if that's a thing, Nigby, but if it is, I apologise. Right. Uh, fantastic feedback. With all of these locks, that's a thing they've got in common. They, they click and give very positive feedback and good false sets in some cases. But you know what's going on. That's already in a false. And there you go. These are great locks, by the way. It's the Abus 83 with a Schlage core. Um, so the core comes out. You can change the core for different makes of core. Um, it's just a tremendous lock, that. Right, let's, uh, let's go. This is an ERA 975. It's an insurance five-lever padlock. Uh, bought this brand new. They're quite expensive. This was a bit of a bargain, so I thought I'll have that. Let's see if we can get this open. In the same sort of time frame. Reasonably light tension. Oh, nearly there. There you go. That just leaves us with a disc detainer. Uh, and this is a Zarka J45S. And disc detainers can be a mixed bag. But this one has the loveliest, clickiest feedback. So let's get the old Cheeto pick lined up.
That's pin one. We're not going to touch that because I know it's a zero cut. That's a zero. There you go. Oh, I feel better already. It's like Prozac in lock form. All right, lock picking hippie. Congratulations again. Cheers.